To produce beautiful wood grain, there are many techniques, each of which gives a quite different result. Which is the best one does not depend so much on the technique we are using, but on the type of result we are trying to achieve. If we look around, we have tens, hundreds of examples of how wood can look different depending on the uses made of it. The color, the grain of the wood, even the painting create an almost infinite variety and from which it is good to take inspiration. Before deciding what technique to use, it is therefore always good to ask yourself what result do you want to achieve? Do I need a wood that looks very realistic? Do I need wood that's right for the scale I'm using? Even the general setting of the piece we are creating should influence the way we both build and paint it, of course. To create a beautiful wood effect, we need to know which tools to use depending on the starting material. With experience, I learned to use different materials depending on the final use of the wood I'm creating and each starting material can be worked with different tools depending on the final result we have in mind. Today we will see how it's possible to obtain different results with insulation foam, balsa wood and classic popsicle sticks. The tools we are going to use are a thermocutter, a not too hard metal brush, an awl, a very sharp cutter and an ink pen with a rounded tip. For those more lazy, but especially for those who have uh, to cover large surfaces in a short time, we will also take a look at Green Stuff World's roll pin wood. Creating wooden planks with the proxon table is very easy, but for those of you who don't own a proxon, I will show you a couple of tricks that could make your life easier. Take a rigid cardboard or even a piece of hard plastic and with the hot glue stick to pieces of wood of the same height, making sure that they are perfectly parallel to each other. Before gluing the pieces of wood, precisely draw the lines where to place them. Once you have prepared this simple tool, you can cut thin layers of uh, insulation foam with a certain precision. You can use pieces of wood uh, of different heights to obtain different thicknesses. Let's start with the door built with real wood parts. For this door, we will need two standard sized popsicle sticks and one of almost double sizes. With an awl, we start to affect the wood, drawing clearly visible lines along the entire length of the pieces. We do this on both sides. Then, with a very sharp knife, we begin to file the edges of the pieces in a random way without being afraid to be too aggressive. I recommend always try to cut away from you with the blade. I used one of my dungeon doors as a reference for the dimensions. I simply measured the length of the individual pieces by eye using the first as a reference for the others. Now let's do the same thing with the larger stick. This time we will use the curved end. However, the door is about 2 inches high and 1.5 inches wide. With the ruler, thanks to the cutter, it is possible to cut the large stick about halfway, thus obtaining two of the standard sides with the already curved end.
Yeah. Unfortunately for a technical problem I lost the assembly of this door. But don't worry, I simply joined the four popsicle sticks between them with the super glue. While for the additional components I refer you to the second door, the one that I will show you in a moment. The assembly is identical, only the material is different. I want to frame the wooden door inside the super beams and timber. I will use some balsa wood pieces of about a quarter inch for this. The balsa wood is very soft, so it is also possible to engrave it with a ballpoint pen. The pen is useful because it offers more control and allows you to draw knots in the wood. When we draw the wood grain, let's not forget the ends. The wooden beams are very interesting at their ends and it's very easy to reproduce this effect with diagonal lines. For the dimension, just use the door. It must remain included in the frame. Balsa wood is really very easy to cut with a cutter. We complete the incisions with the pen and cut away the edges with the cutter. I always love to insert small details in each of my pieces so as to make it unique. In this case, with the hot glue I added a little skull from the game HeroQuest. Always check that you have a good supply of small items and details to add. Your pieces will have a lot of added value. Now the foam door. We take a piece of insulation foam. I like taking pieces of waste to recycle as much material as possible. I cut a slice of 2 inches in height and a half inch in height. Then thanks to the proxen I can cut this piece in a slice only 4-5 mm thick. I use the balsa stick as a reference for the dimensions to obtain the two supports for the timber. I cut a square timber. And I finish the cutting phase with a few millimeter slice that will serve as a base for my door. With the pen, I divided the foam slice that I used for the door in half, then I divided the two halves in half again. You can use any carved object to draw the curvature of the door. Slowly cut along the line with the cutter. Even if you do not get a perfect curve, you can correct it using a nailed file. To accentuate the separation of the wooden planks, first Pass lightly with the cutter, then use the pen. For the basic textures, use a not too stiff metal brush. It produces a great result on the foam. I 
after passing all the wooden planks, you can add deeper wood grains with the pen, also drawing knots in the wood. The wooden supports are very delicate piece of foam. To obtain the wood grain without breaking them, we use a hot foam cutter. Pass very quickly with the end of the foam cutter to draw the wood grain. This step offers a further advantage, as well as not damaging the small pieces too much, makes the foam surface more resistant and rigid. Use the same tool to age the piece and stop a little bit with the tip to create small knots and grooves. Warning! You must always be very light so as not to completely melt the foam. Do the same procedure for the timber. For the horizontal reinforcement of the door, take a thin slice of foam. Quickly create the wood grain with the pen. Measuring by eye, cut a piece a bit shorter than the total width of the door. Then divide it in half with the cutter and each piece still enough. Use the hole to simulate the nail holes. Use a thin layer of hot glue to fix the pieces, making sure they are on the same side of the door. Now take two small rings, for example pieces of metal chain, and fasten them to the correct hay with a drop of super glue. Now we prepare the base for the door using the textured roll pin of Green Stuff Ford. Fast and easy. We are ready to assemble the support frame with the door. almost completed work I realized that the timber was disproportionate to the rest. The nice thing about working with foam is that mistakes can be corrected very quickly. I cut the timber in half and I redesigned the wood grain with the foam cutter. To add some solidity and also to embellish the piece a little bit I added two small nails in the timber. At this point, with the hot glue, set the door to the base. If you like, you can add two thin washers under the base for extra weight and more stability. Now the doors are complete and you can see how the wood grain is interesting and rich. Once again, small details, in this case I add a piece of plastic vegetation to my second door for a special touch. Now painting. At this point we start by covering the foam door with a layer of acrylic black. Then we cover the wood door with the brown combined white water. It's a sort of washing which serves to impregnate the wood and make subsequent painting operations easier.
We continue on both pieces with a grayish brown hand. Once dry, we pass a light coat of sienna brown. After this, you can add green or even orange randomly. Also, refer to my number one tutorial for this technique. Now, highlight everything with the lighter brown. I use some green with the foliage. Once the pieces are completely dry again, we wash with brown for the wooden door and black wash for the foam door. Once dry, highlight again with warm grey, almost beige but really with a light touch and only the most protruding parts. And here is the result. Yeah, just choose the style you prefer. I would like to know your opinion. You can uh, leave your opinion in the comments. Also, I would like to know which style of the two doors is more to your taste. Okay, guys, this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe this channel. Remember to support this channel through Patreon or uh, PayPal. And uh, yes, I think I see you all on the next episode. Till next time, happy crafting!